Welcome to the Wilderness Course. I have some great friends sitting around me today, and we're going to be discussing this very, very important aspect of our Christian walk. First of all, let me introduce our guests that are around with me. First of all, we got Choice over here to my left. Choice, Hi. it's great to have you. Thank you so much for One of our me. interns at Messenger International, yep. and then we have a longtime friend, manager of our warehouse. You know, some of you people get our our resources shipped to your home. You've had them, you know, sent overseas. This is Daryl. He's the manager of our warehouse and a really close friend. Daryl, it's great to have you. Thank you for Yeah, it's nice to have somebody close to my age on, you know. I've been waiting on this I won't make you as old years. as me, but anyway. <laughs> and then we've got Jessica, another intern at Messenger International. It's great to have you, Thank Jessica. You. I'm so excited to be here. You're from Pennsylvania, right? Yes. And then we have my son, Arden Christopher, yeah. our baby of the family who towers over me. But anyway, this is a life message for me. First of all, I can't tell you how excited I am that you have decided to enroll in the Wilderness Course because I spent years and years of pure frustration, not understanding what I was going through. This is going to help you immensely, and so the excitement we all hold is huge. I want to say this. We did a podcast last year, Lisa and I, in our Conversations podcast. We have never in the history of our podcast had more responses and more comments when we just two, did two very brief and basic messages on the wilderness. That's when we began to pray and the team decided we have got to do a course on this. I want to say this, that if you want to be close to God and if you want to fulfill what he has called you to do, then you are listening to the right course right now. If you don't want to be close to God and you don't want to fulfill what he's called you to do, stop right now because you really don't need to hear anything else I'm going to say. So I'm glad we got that decision now. To open up, I want to look at the book of Ecclesiastes. In chapter 3, verse 1, we have the famous, famous scripture that says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So this tells us right now that there are seasons in our life. And here's the important thing. I want you to write this down, okay? Every season has a purpose. Now, it is extremely important to know the purpose of the season that we're in or to discern the season we're in. Yeah. I want you to picture this, all right? We live in Colorado. Everybody likes to snowboard or ski here, right? And so I want you to see this guy. He's, he's up at Breckenridge, all right? And he's going up a lift. You got it? You see it? He's got, his, he's got his parka on. He's got his gloves, his goggles. He's got his snowboard. And the lift gets all the way to the top, and he jumps off only to fall flat on his face because there's no snow on the ground, okay? Now, the guy right behind him, he's coming up with a Trek bicycle, he jumps off and goes down the mountain. The other guy's rolling down because he can't get his snowboard to work. What has happened here? One guy has incorrectly discerned the season. The other guy has correctly discerned the season. You know, in Luke chapter 12, he looks at the people. He says, hey, if you see a cloud rising up in the west, you know there's a storm coming. He said, if a south wind blows, you know it's going to be warm weather, right? But he says this, and it's amazing. He says, hypocrites. And he's talking to the multitudes, not the Pharisees here. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you can't discern this time? So what may be correct behavior in one season may be utterly incorrect in another season. Are you with me? So let's look at 1 Chronicles. I love this scripture. I don't hear people talk about it. I think it's because it's mixed in with all this stuff about the genealogies and all the people and the tribes and all that. But I love this scripture. It says, the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. These men knew the right behavior at the right time. So it does take understanding our times to know the appropriate behavior. So it's important for two things. Number one, we discern the season that we are in. Number two, learn, and that's why we're taking this course, learn the appropriate behavior. So to make it specific for this course, guys, here's what we got here. Number one, this course is going to teach us how to discern the wilderness season. Okay, very important. Number two, show us from scripture the appropriate behavior yeah. in the wilderness. And number three, you're going to discover the benefits 
of the wilderness. You say, benefits? Come on. Yes, there are benefits to the wilderness season, and you will learn that as we go along. So let's start out by saying, what is the wilderness? All right, three things to point out what the wilderness is. First of all, let me give you the raw definition of the wilderness. Number one, it's a lack of the tangible presence of God. So the Bible speaks of two presences of God. I want to make this very clear. There is the omnipresence of God, okay? That is where David said, where shall I flee from your presence? If I go to the highest mountain, you're there. If I make my bed down the lowest valley, you're there, right? That's the presence of the Lord that says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The other presence the Bible speaks about is John chapter 14. Jesus talked about the manifest presence. Manifest means to bring from the unseen into the seen, the unknown into the known. It's when God reveals himself to our senses. The wilderness season is when we lack that tangible presence of God. Secondly, here's the raw definition. Secondly, it is the season, listen carefully, when the promises that he's made to us personally seem like they are far off. And it seems like you're actually going away from the promises, not heading towards the promises. That is so important that you understand that. All right. Have you ever thought to yourself, and I, and, and, and I just want to see if I was the only one that ever thought this. Have you ever thought or screamed out in your prayer closet, God, where are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We're on the same page. You know, I got a video to illustrate this. I want you to watch. Everybody has a hero. Okay. Come on. Mine's my dad. <laughs> yes, I can. Since mom died, it's only been us. He has a way of filling my life with color. Dad. Yeah. Which one? That one. Sometimes I don't understand his advice, but I trust him. And what always brought us together was our love for running. Oh. <laughs> My dad thinks he's faster than me. But I won't stop training. One day, I'll be faster than him. And when I am, I'm going to win every marathon in the world. Debbie? At least that was my plan. Debbie? What's wrong, champ? I'm losing my sight. Read to me the lowest level that you can see on What is called is interocular melanoma. Eye cancer. Unfortunately, you will lose your vision. It was the worst day of my life. I thought he would be there for me. Dad! Wakey, wakey. Are you to run, Chip? Come on. I guess I was wrong. <laughs> he abandoned me. Where are you, Dad? Where did you go? Does he not love me anymore? Am I still beautiful? Is he no longer proud of me? How could you leave me when I need you the most? Abby thinks I've left her. And as much as it pains me to hear that, she's right. I've left her. The best that we can do is can save the please? actual eyes so that cosmetically she doesn't lose them. That's my girl. I understand. That's my girl. That's my little girl. There's support groups, and I know this is a very difficult time. Ah! 
I've left her to realize she's more courageous than she ever imagined. I've left her to discover how beautiful she is from the inside out. I've left her to challenge herself in ways she never considered. I've left her to discover how strong she really is. Think about how far you've come. My dad says he gave me what I needed, not what I wanted. You ready? Yep. Folks, what we're seeing here is amazing. This is a testament of true love. Love is allowing, allowing someone to see their true worth and beauty. I used to think my dreams were over. I thought I'd never run again. And even though I can't see my dad, I know he's guiding me the entire way. Uh, that's a pretty moving short video, isn't it? Yeah. But you know what? It explains exactly the reason for the wilderness. If you look at what Job says when he's in the middle of his desert, he said, look, I go forward, but he, God, is not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. When he works, now notice I put that in blue. Yeah. He is working, just like that father was helping her, his daughter, right? When he works on the left hand, I cannot behold him. So he, it seemed like the more he's seeking God, the more elusive God is, right? When he turns to the right hand, I cannot see him, but he knows the way I take. That father knew everything his daughter was doing, but he was trying to get her to the place where she could handle this situation. And you know, in many aspects, doesn't this tell us about our lives? Because the things in the spirit world, we don't see them physically. So in reality, we're blind physically to seeing what's happening in the spirit world. And here's our father trying to get us to become mature so that we can handle the forces of darkness that try to hinder us. So I think that is a beautiful illustration of what God does in the wilderness. Now, number two, so number one, God, where are you? Number two, the wilderness can be a time, and most of the time it is, but it's not necessarily true, where you are tempted, all right? It's a testing time. What is the two major temptations of the wilderness that the enemy tries to get us with? Number one, to quit. He just wants us to give up on our faith. Number two, to sin, to willfully sin. It's very important that we understand that. And number three, the wilderness is when God gives you what you need rather than what you want. Now, let me, let me settle this right now, okay? There's a big difference between our needs and our wants. In America, because we live in such an affluent society in America, we a lot of times think a lot of our wants are actually needs, but they're not, that's not true. They're, they're, they're wants, okay? And so God will, in this wilderness season, only give you what you need. Let's look at Deuteronomy 8. There's a beautiful example of this. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna. Now, whoa, 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 stop right there. That sounds like a contradiction. 
He caused you to hunger, but then he fed you. Now, yeah. didn't he feed them every day? Mm -hmm. Didn't this manna come down every single morning? And on the Sabbath, he gave them a bumper crop so they could eat just as much on the Sabbath day. Yep. They never went to bed with, with empty stomachs, right? right? So what does he mean he caused you to hunger? Well, let me give you an illustration. Back when I was a youth pastor in the 1980s, I took 56 kids down to the nation of Trinidad. You know, we went house to house, and it was a great week, a lot of... Uh, fruit came out of it, but the church that we were working with down in Trinidad, they fed us our lunch and our dinners. I have never in my life had so much chicken. I mean, every lunch, every chicken, every dinner was chicken, 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 10 days of chicken, okay? So we fly back on the plane, and one of the 14-year-old boys in my youth group is met by his mother. He goes, Mom, what's for dinner tonight? And she goes, chicken, and he screamed. He said, would you please take me to McDonald's? Yeah. So can you imagine eating, even though this bread, I mean, Elijah ate two cakes of it, went 40 days and 40 nights. I sometimes wish I had protein bars like that myself. But this is the best food man's ever put in his mouth. But yet, can you imagine, what's for dinner tonight, honey? Uh, bread. Okay. Okay, okay, that's great. Now, 10 days later, what's for dinner? Bread. You're, you're now like my 14-year-old. But let's, let's think of it like this. Three years later, what's for, what's for dinner tonight? Bread. Ah! You know? So you know, we brag about in the wilderness, their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out, right? Can you imagine wearing the exact same outfit for 40 years? Okay, no shopping malls, right? There's no, there, there's no H&M, there is no Zara, there is no Lululemon, there is no Athleta. I mean, you've got the same outfit on for 40 years. Come on, how ridiculous is that, right? Yeah. So he caused them to hunger that way by giving them what they needed, not what they wanted, all right? Which you did not know, nor, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives. This is what he's creating a hunger in us for. He's given us only what we need so we develop a hunger for what we really need yeah, it's yeah. the word of god really right yeah. and so that proceeds from the mouth of the lord you know look look at their landscape same thing you know i, I forgot to say that one can you imagine if all you saw every day for your landscape was bulrush yeah. parched ground cactuses Oh my gosh, no rivers. That's why he kept talking when I bring you into this place with rich valleys and yeah. fruitful fields. and all. They're, they're watering. Their mouths are watering because they've been in this desert. Now, some of you are probably sitting there thinking, going, hey, dude, dude, they're in that wilderness because they disobeyed God. Ha, huh. no, 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 no. If you read your Bible carefully, you'll find out that it was God's intention to bring them into that wilderness for one year. It's when they messed up, had inappropriate behavior at the end of that year that extended it to a lifetime of the wilderness. Can I tell you this? This tells us the truth right here. You need to write this down. You cannot shorten the wilderness experience that God has designed for you, but you certainly can lengthen it. <laughs> okay, so here's one of the benefits. You, you know, you, let me just say this before I say the benefit. I've met people that have been in the wilderness for years. I mean years because of inappropriate behavior in the wilderness. I'm not saying inappropriate. I'm saying incorrect behavior is the better way of saying it. And so they've been circling around this mountain in the desert yeah. for 30 years sometimes. Wow. And it's heartbreaking. Oh, my goodness, it's heartbreaking because I know God has so much more, but yet they got stuck because of not understanding the purpose of it. And that's why I'm so happy you're taking this course. So the benefit is you will come to understand in this course, you will come to understand the proper behavior in the wilderness so you don't extend your stay. So you're in good company here. I mean, Joseph gets a dream of great leadership. What, what's next? The pit, slavery, and the dungeon. And pit, by the way, stands for preachers in training, if you didn't know that. <laughs> Moses, you know, he knows he's got a call of God on his life. And at 40 years of age, he has the authority, he has the power, he has the ability to deliver his kinsmen, right? He goes to do it, he miserably fails, and he gets the backside of the desert for 40 years. You're looking at David. David, who gets anointed by the number one prophet of the nation, he's going to be the next king, but he spends the next 14 years of his life in caves, wildernesses, and deserts. Guys, the wilderness is a necessary time in every child of God, and you're going to ultimately find out in this course it's for God's protection on your life. 
So I want, I want you to just remember that. The wilderness is God ultimately protecting you. All right? For these people I just named, it was a physical location. For us, it's when God seems like he's a million miles away and his promises are even further. Yeah. Okay? What the wilderness is not. I want to close this session with this because this is so important. Number one, the wilderness is, is not God's punishment or disapproval on your life. Please remember that because that's the first thing that went through my mind when I went through my first wilderness experience. It's like, God, what have I done? What, 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 what have I done wrong? So that's where everybody's mind goes to first. It is not God's punishment or disapproval. Number two, it's not his abandonment. Okay? He has promised you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Number three, it's not being put on the shelf until he's ready to use you. That's ridiculous. God never wastes. If he tells us in Ephesians, I want you to redeem the time, he never wastes a moment of our life. I want you to write that down. God never wastes a moment of your life. Okay, it is not, and here's number four, the wilderness is not defeat. God intends for us to have victory in the wilderness. You've heard some people say, well, you know, this is just God's trying to teach me something. He's put this sickness, this disease, this poverty. I can't pay my bills. Listen, God would never put something on you that Jesus took on him to free us. Okay, uh, but I thought we're supposed to give thanks for everything. You know, I actually heard a minister say that he was giving thanks for his wife's breast cancer. Oh, I about wanted to scream when I heard that. It doesn't say for everything give thanks. It says in everything give thanks. That means you're in the desert, you're in the trial, you're in this. You thank God that he is God. He's our source, our healer, our deliverer, right? So now that we've seen what the wilderness is and the wilderness is not, we are now come to the place where we want to find out what's the purpose for it, right? Doesn't that really help when you understand for the purpose? We're going to do that in the next lesson, so we'll see you guys then. Thank you.